you know, I got Skyler back there in the sound booth that he's never done that before. And I, I'm thankful that he says, Pastor, how can I help? I know you got a lot of people out this morning. And I just thankful for everybody that steps up to help. Um, you know, people that say, hey, I don't know what to do, but I'm willing to do it. You know, if you can just kind of give me an idea of what to do, I'll do it. Um, so I'm thankful for everybody and how everybody pitches in and how everybody helps out. Um, it, you know, everybody here has done it from one week to another, uh, from one event to another. You weren't really sure what to do, but you didn't allow the fear or not knowing how to do something to hold you back. You just said, hey, if you can give me an idea, I'll do my best. And that's all God wants from us. And that's just to say, hey, I'll do it if you just show me what to do, God. And, and when he calls us to do something, he's going to equip us. He's going to show us. He's going to use us. But we got to have that willing spirit. we got to have that, that willingness to step up and do that. Um, like I said, we'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 this morning. And um, I just want to share what God, I felt like God was laying upon my heart this week. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 1 through 5 is our text this morning. <laughs> And he says there, in, and, I be, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with ex excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The first thing I want us to see in this, in this text this morning is, do not rely on yourself. We can, we can go into something, especially when it's something God has called us to do. We can go in there thinking, I got this. I, I know exactly how to do this. And, and it may be something that we've done a hundred times. It may be something we've done all our life, and we think, I got this. I, I've been doing this all my life. But one thing we need to remember, when God calls us to do something, he may be leading us to do it in a, in a whole different way than the way that we've done it all our life. So we need to, we need to not rely on ourselves. I, I, I can almost bet you that Danetta and Savannah weren't relying on their own self to come up here this morning. Because they would have stayed right in the seats that they're in right now. But they relied on God. Amen. We, we cannot rely on ourselves. Paul says, when I came to you, I came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom. One thing we need to, we need to understand, one thing we need to realize is Paul was a very educated man. He grew up a Pharisee. He grew up being taught scripture and the law and, and these things. So he was a very educated man. But he says, I didn't come to you with excellence of speech. I didn't come to you with my own wisdom. I, I didn't come to you in my own accord, in my own strength. I didn't come to you with my own abilities. He came to proclaim the testimony of God. Not show how smart he was. Not show how talented of a speaker he was. Not to show how much scripture that he could quote word for word. He didn't come on his own in his own ability. See, he came to give a message that God had given him. When God calls us to do something, he doesn't call us to come and do our own thing, but to allow him to use us. If God has called us to share a message, he's called each and every one of us. If you're a born again believer, God has called you to share a message of hope, a message of of your salvation, a message of your faith, to tell people why you have hope, what your hope is found in. And 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks if you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Too many times we use the excuses why we can't witness to others is, why, why we can't tell others about Jesus? We, we use the excuses of, I don't know what to say. I don't really know very many scriptures. I, I, don't, I don't really have many memorized. Or I don't know where to show people things in the Bible. I don't know where to find things in the Bible. 
but as a believer, you have a hope that lost people don't have. Amen. You have a hope of eternity, a hope that when you leave this earth, that you'll be in the presence of Jesus Christ. <coughs> That's a hope that believe, unbelievers do not have. And, and we as believers can share that hope with others. You don't have to be able to, to, to look up all these different scriptures or know where they're all found at. One of, you know, in, in evangelism, one of the things that they'll teach you is get you a Bible and go through and mark some of the pages. They call it a marked New Testament. And you can actually buy New Testaments that are called marked New Testaments. And they've already had, like the Roman road, highlighted. And you go through the different scriptures in Romans to, to, to be able to share with people about that they're a sinner and that God died for them. And that, you know, that they can confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and be saved. And, and they got like John 3, 16, they got different things. You can buy those or you can just take the Bible you got. And go through there, and you can Google the Roman road, and it'll give you the different verses in Romans that you can highlight. Mark it in your Bible, put little sticky notes or something. So that way when you're talking to people, you can say, hey, let's look in Romans. You won't, well, Pastor, what if they ask me a question I can't answer? I don't know, I'll have to get back to you. There's times when people ask me questions, and I'm like, I ain't got a clue. But I'll do some research, and we'll get back with that. Or I'll call somebody... That can help you find that answer for you. God doesn't tell us that we have to know everything about the Bible. Know where every scripture is in the Bible. And have every scripture memorized. But we need to know that God has called each and every one of us to share our faith with others. Acts 1.8 says, but ye shall receive the power after, what, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. We're not going to go into all the different parts of the earth there. But what I, want us to, what, what I want you to see there is God has already told you, he's already promised you that he's given you power. If you're a born-again believer, I believe that a born-again believer, the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're indwelt with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So you are given the power of the Holy Ghost to speak through you. You're, you've already got that power with inside you. All you got to do is tap into it. All you got to do is be a willing vessel. Well, Pastor, I don't know how to do that. Just be willing. And I don't know what's going on with the mics this morning, but we're going to continue on. We're, we're not gearing. We don't have to uh, a special a special I shut it off. I'm tired of hearing it pop. We're going to do it old fashioned. Well, I hear you. Turn to that as my. Well, I still hear you just fine. All right. <laughs> there, there's no special formula, there's no special key or something that you can put in to It's just being available to God. You don't have to quote the, a, a certain scripture to release the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You, you don't have to, to do some kind of magic formula or drink some kind of potion or take some kind of pill or, or do something special. You just be willing to be used by God. Pray and seek God. Amen. Man, I get here on Sunday mornings. I get here at 7 o'clock. And, and I go in my office and I sit down and I, I pray and, and I pray have some time of prayer there and then I read through my sermon and then I come over here and I come and I get down on the altar and I pray again and I pray that God will use me here and then I've been blessed with some young men in our church that pull me aside into the side room over here before service starts and say pastor let's pray and they pull me in that room and they pray for me and I'm so thankful that these young men came to me and asked if they could pray for me before services what a blessing that is but it's being willing to be used by God. It, you don't have to do something special. Just be willing. A willing vessel. Whether that's getting up and, and singing or playing the piano or knocking on a door or, or talking to a co-worker or talking to a family member. Just allow God. You've already got the Holy Spirit and the power within you. 
we need to realize that we got to take the focus off of ourselves and put the focus on God. Amen. Because when I focus on myself, I start allowing that fear to build up. I, I can't do it. Man, what, and I can tell you when it happens a lot. When I'm going to get up and do a funeral or, or do a special service and, and I just start seeing the, this, this sanctuary fill up. I start getting nervous. I start getting afraid. And I got to just stop for a moment and say, okay, this ain't about me. It's about God. Lord, help me not allow my nerves to get the best of me. Don't allow my nerves to overcome me and, and allow my fears to hold me back. But Lord, just use me today. We need to take the, the, the focus off of ourselves and put it on God. We can't honor and glorify Jesus like we've been called to when we are making excuses. Man, I, I, can, I'm, I, I can make the excuses with the best of them. I, I can start quoting, I can start giving you excuses probably better than anybody else in here. I, I can't do it. I stutter. I, you know, I'm scared. I'm, I'm afraid. I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to write sermons. I don't know. How, you know, we, we can stand here all day long and start making excuses. But it ain't about us. It's about God. The next thing I see there is it's okay to be afraid. Paul says there in verse 3, I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. Hear the here the apostle Paul, the greatest missionary, started all kinds of churches, went all over Asia, and preached the word of God. Again, very educated man, knew all kinds of scriptures. And he says, I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. But he didn't allow his fear to hold him back. I can tell you right now, I ain't even got to ask them. Danetta and Savannah were scared this morning. They were trembling. I was talking, my pastor's meeting this week. One of the pastors were talking about somebody coming up into them and, and talking about being scared before they got up and spoke. And, and the pastor was talking to a younger guy that was just kind of getting into the ministry and stuff. And, and he says, Pastor, he says, I'm I get scared. I get nervous when I get up to speak. And this guy's been in the ministry for like 25, 30 years. He says, so do I. I, I can tell you, I get scared to get up here. We can allow fears. As Sean said, fear is a liar. It can hold us back if we allow it to. But we can't. We got to rely on God. When we start making these excuses, I, I, I'm shy, I'm afraid, I, I can't do it, I can't speak enough, I can't, uh, you know, I can't say the right words, I can't pronounce the different names in the Bible, and I can't do this. And I, the problem with all those excuses is I. Yeah, I can't do it. If I get up here and I try to do it, I can't. But if I get up here and allow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost to use me, that I can. What Paul wanted to do is he wanted to model Christ. So he humbly came to them and says, I come to you in weakness and I come to you trembling and in fear. See, Paul wanted to come and be used by God, not to do it on his own power. The next thing we see there is demonstration of spirit and power in verse 4. Paul says he did not use his speaking, speaking with enticing words. In other words, he is not going to use big words or fancy words to persuade the people. A person can come in and they can start using all these big words and, and, and show that they got this doctrine in some kind of degree or whatever. And, and they start using all these big words and the rest of us are sitting out there like, I ain't got a clue what he's talking about because I ain't never heard of that word unless I don't know what it means. But we can get caught up in that. I think, man, this guy's a really educated guy, man. He's, he's a really good pastor, and, and man, he's really this, and he's really that. But so Paul says, I'm not going to go and entice you. I'm not going to try to bring you to do something in my own terms, in my own abilities, in my own gifts. But I'm going to fully rely on the power of the Holy Ghost to share the message of God that is given to me. 
So you may be a, a, a great speaker. You may be very talented at speaking. You may know all kinds of scripture. You may be able to quote scripture by the hundreds and thousands right out of the Bible, word for word. I had an aunt, Miss, Miss Betty Williams' mom back there. She could sit right there on the second pew, and you could be like, there's a, there's a, there's a verse, and it starts like this, and she'd tell you exactly where it was found and be able to quote it to you word for word. God gave her that ability. And I don't care where it was found. The Old Testament, the New Testament, she could do it all day long. You could just one scripture right after another. But we have to rely, first and foremost, no matter if we're a talented speaker or know all the Bible, whether we can quote scripture front and back, we got to rely on the Holy Ghost first and foremost. He's the one that's going to make or break it. God did not intend for us to be a witness on our, in our own strength and our own power. I, I love how God uses our weaknesses. I think of David fighting Goliath. Man, anybody standing back would say, hey, David's fixing to lose it. He's fixing to get slaughtered. He's just this young little kid. You know, it'd be like Porter coming up here wanting to pick a fight with me. Everybody like, wow, Porter, dude, you're just, you're nuts. And then Porter coming up here and whooping me. You know, that's David and Goliath. But God used David as an example. It doesn't matter what we're facing. If we just rely on God, we can face the biggest things that, that we might think, there ain't no way I can beat that guy. There's no way I can defeat Goliath. But with God, we can do anything. The last thing we see in verse 5 there is the power of God. Paul closes this, this section of text here. And he didn't want people to place their trust and their faith in him. He wanted them to place his faith and their faith and trust in the power of God. Paul was saying it's not about me and what I can do. But it's about God and what he has done and is doing and continues to do. Paul was not placing his trust in himself, and he didn't want the people placing their trust in him. He wanted them to place their trust in God, just as he was placing his trust in the power of God. We see last week, Romans 1.16, that the power of God on the salvation is the gospel message. That Jesus died on the cross, he shed his blood for us, so that we can have forgiveness of sins, and that we can have an eternal life. We can share our testimony. I've heard people too say, well, Pastor, I don't really have a testimony. I, I used to think that. You know, I was born and raised in a, in a Christian home. My dad has been a deacon all as long as I can remember. My mom taught school at the Christian school. I went to Christian school. You know, born and raised in a church my whole life. There, there's not been very many Sundays that I haven't been <coughs> in this church on a Sunday morning in my entire life. And it's like, there's there, you know, and you hear these guys that, you know, they were addicted to drugs and alcohol and pornography and all these different things. And, and it was like they woke up the next morning and God saved their souls. And, and boy, he just drug them right out of the drugs and right out of the alcohol. And we think, man, that guy's got a powerful testimony. And he does. That person has a powerful testimony. And God can use him to, to minister to, to alcoholics and drug addicts and, and people addicted to pornography and addicted to these different things. But whatever avenue, wherever you've come from in life, maybe you're like me, that you were born and raised in church all your life. You know what? God can use me to reach people too. Because there's people out there that is born and raised in church all their life, and they still don't know God. But God can use me to minister to them because I was in that situation. You know, yeah, I was born and raised all my life in church. But I can tell you from being born and raised all my life in church, that there comes a point in your life that you, you kind of think you got to experience the world. I, 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 as an adult, I kind of hoped, and as a father, I kind of hoped it was just my stupidity. But I've unfortunately witnessed my daughter do the same thing. But it helped me to know that, you know what? My God is faithful. 
And my God will bring them back. Because he brought me back. A, a, a person that should be in the Red Level Cemetery or in the Citrus County prison system. God saved me from those things. Because he had a plan for my life. Amen. You know, and he can use us to go out and witness to people. I don't care how powerful or unpowerful you think your, your testimony is. Your testimony is as powerful as you allow God to use it to be. That's right. He can use your testimony beyond your wildest dreams. You think, well, Pastor, I, I don't know that I can share my faith. I remember years ago, me and my wife, I've shared this multiple times. We go to knock on a door, and y'all all know my wife. She, it's hard to shut her up. Oh, oh. <laughs> she likes she to get it later. <laughs> she likes to talk. So we made the agreement. We made the agreement while we were in the car that my wife would do all the talking. She likes. She she's the talker. I'm the shy one. You do the talking. I'm gonna do the writing. And when we get to the door, she looks at me. The guy answers the door, and I look at her. And I'm waiting for her to start talking, and she looks at me like, "Are you gonna say say something?" <laughs> and it was at that moment. That was probably one of the first times that God really showed you <laughs> that if you just step out of the way and be obedient and available to me, I'll use you. Because just as quick as she looked at me and was like, are you going to start talking? It was like God just started speaking through me. It was like I had no control over what was being said. Because I was willing to allow God to use me. And he can do that with each and every one of you. But you have to be willing first. You got to say, I can do it. With the power of the Holy Spirit working through you. Let's close the word for